Hello and welcome back, I hope, to Lockdown Anatomy with me, Alice Roberts. This is a video all about the hip, the bones of the hip, the associated ligaments and the muscles that move the hip joint as well. And once again, I'm using the fantastic 3D for Medical Complete Anatomy app here to show you this anatomy. The hip joint is the joint between the head of the femur, the thigh bone, and the pelvic or innominate bone. Let's have a look at some of the ligaments around the hip and ligaments that are helping support the hip a little bit further back as well. These ligaments which are attaching from that pelvic or innominate bone back to the sacrum and the coccyx. You've got the sacrospinous ligament, which attaches from the sacrum across to the ischial spine, and the sacrotuberous ligament, which attaches across from the sacrum and the coccyx down to the ischial tuberosity. So the names of both of those ligaments just describe the attachment points. Sacro from the sacrum, spinous across to the ischial spine, tuberous across to the ischial tuberosity. And we can also see one of the ligaments that helps to strengthen the fibrous capsule of the hip here, the ischiofemoral ligament. So that's attaching from the margins of the acetabulum at the back and then the fibres are arcing in and then spiralling round and actually joining into the circular fibres of that hip capsule. Moving around to the front, we can see some other ligaments which are strengthening the hip capsule. There's one that looks like a Y or a V and I'm just outlining it here. It's an upside down Y or V. And this is the iliofemoral ligament. It's also called the ligament of Bigelow. And this is the strongest of all of the hip ligaments. And it helps to limit extension at the hip joint. Just medially to that, we can see the pubofemoral ligament. And those fibres are diving underneath the iliofemoral ligament as we move more laterally. And all of those ligaments are named after their attachments on the innominate bone. So we've got one attaching from the ischium, one from the ilium, one from the pubis, and all going across to the neck of the femur. So the iliofemoral, ischiofemoral, and pubofemoral ligaments. While we're here, notice that there's another ligament here, a flat ligament, a flat sheet of fibrous tissue, which is covering most of that obturator foramen. So that open hole in the pelvis is largely closed by that fibrous sheet. Now we'll strip away all of those ligaments. We'll take away the femur as well and have a bit of a closer look at that hip socket, that acetabulum. You'll notice that the articular surface doesn't cover the entire inner surface of that bowl. It's C-shaped. It's wider at the top where most of body weight is transmitted when you're standing in an upright position. And this is the area which is covered with hyaline cartilage, the articular cartilage of the hip joint. There's also a rim around the edge of the acetabulum called the acetabular labrum. And this is made of fibrocartilage and it's a band of fibrocartilage which is triangular in cross section. And it just helps to deepen the acetabulum a little bit more and provides attachment to the capsule too. The acetabulum has this notch anterior inferiorly and that's bridged by a ligament, the transverse acetabular ligament or just transverse ligament. And then attaching from that transverse ligament, we have the ligament of the head of the femur, also known as ligament and teres. So this runs into the bottom of the bowl of the acetabulum and then turns back on itself and attaches to a little pit, a fovea, on the femoral head. All right, now we'll zoom out and just look at those ligaments again, put them all back. We can see an extra one there that we've not noted before. That's the inguinal ligament attaching from the anterior superior iliac spine down to the pubic tubercle. And that gives attachment to anterior abdominal wall muscles. And the femoral artery travels underneath that ligament. I'm going to add on some muscles now and we can look at how those act on the hip joint. The hip joint is a ball and socket joint. It's a multi-axial synovial joint. It moves in flexion, extension, abduction, adduction. And the femur can also rotate along its axis as well in lateral and medial rotation. So let's have a look at some of the muscles which produce all of those movements. Here's iliacus, which 
takes its attachment from that deep, that inner surface of the ilium and then streams down underneath the inguinal ligament to attach onto this prong of bone on the femoral neck, the lesser trochanter. Trochanter is just a word for a protrusion of bone, a lever that a muscle is attaching to. The tendon of iliacus is joined by the tendon of psoas, psoas major, which is a muscle taking its attachment from the lumbar vertebrae. And together, psoas and iliacus, sometimes called iliopsoas, stream underneath the inguinal ligament and attach onto that lesser trochanter. You can hopefully see just by looking at those attachments what these two muscles are going to do to the hip joint. They're going to bring that femur up towards you, so they're going to flex the hip. If we take away the tendon of psoas and look a little bit deeper, we can see this muscle, obturator externus, which arises from the superficial surface of the obturator membrane. And then its tendon wraps around the back of the femur and inserts into the medial surface of the greater trochanter in the trochanteric fossa. So when obturator externus contracts, it's going to laterally or externally rotate the femur, as I've indicated by that arrow. There it is in action. We can see obturator externus from the front here glowing every time it contracts and you can see the femur being pulled into lateral or external rotation. Let's have a look on the inside of the pelvis at another obturator muscle. There's obturator internus attaching from the inner surface of the obturator membrane and the bone surrounding the obturator foramen as well. Looking from a posterior view, you can see obturator internus wrapping around the back of the ischium, escaping from the pelvis through the lesser sciatic foramen. And you can see that tendon streaming laterally and inserting just above the tendon of obturator externus in that trochanteric fossa. There are also two skinny little muscles either side of that obturator internus tendon, and these are the gemelli, the twins. They arise from the posterior surface of the ischium and then insert just either side of that obturator internus tendon. Just below them, we've got a square muscle, if we add that in, that's called quadratus femoris. So again, that's going to be an external rotator of the hip joint. If we add in some more muscles, we can see yet another one, which is going to be an external rotator. And this is piriformis muscle, which comes actually from the sacrum, the inner surface of the sacrum. But just to really kind of draw out where those muscles are attaching and where they're going from and to, let's strip them away, go back to looking at these ligaments. There's the sacrospinous ligament attaching from the sacrum and coccyx across to the ischial spine and there's the sacrotuberous ligament below it attaching across to the ischial tuberosity. Those ligaments enclose two foramina, two holes, the greater sciatic foramen above and the lesser sciatic foramen below. It looks like a really wide open gap in this image but in fact it's almost a slit like opening. I always think of it as almost like the opening when you just start to open a pair of scissors and you can imagine the blades of the scissors being those two ligaments, the sacrospinous and the sacrotuberous ligaments. And you've just got this slit like opening starting to open up the lesser sciatic foramen. So let's have a look at these muscles that start off life on the inside of the pelvis and then escape. Obturator internus there escaping through the lesser sciatic foramen to get to the back of the hip joint. Piriformis, a pear shaped muscle attaching from the three middle segments of the sacrum and escaping out of the pelvis this time through the greater sciatic foramen to get to the back of the hip joint. So all of those are going to be external rotators, piriformis, obturator internus with its gemelli, obturator externus and quadratus femoris. Above piriformis we can see one of these gluteal muscles, these muscles of the buttocks and this is the deepest one, this is gluteus minimus. And then above that, or superficial to that, is gluteus medius. So we can put gluteus medius on, we can still see piriformis. If we add another layer of gluteal muscles, the most superficial gluteal muscle is gluteus maximus, the largest of them all. In fact, the largest muscle in the whole body. And this covers up all of that anatomy that we've just been looking at. And gluteus maximus 
insert into the iliotibial tract, which is a tract of fibrous tissue down the outer side of the thigh, but also into the gluteal tuberosity. It's going to be an external rotator, but perhaps more importantly, it's an extensor of the hip joint. Moving around to the front, it's time to have a look at some of the actions of these muscles and how they operate the hip joint. Here is rectus femoris, which is part of quadriceps muscle, and that's crossing the hip joint anteriorly, so that's going to flex it. You can see every time it grows yellow, it pulls that hip into flexion. It bends the hip. Psoas is glowing yellow here, and you can see that that is also flexing the hip joint. Here's another flexor, pectineus, attaching from the superior pubic ramus down to the femur. Medially in the thigh, we've got a whole group of muscles which are adductors, and they're all called adductors. We have adductor longus, brevis, and magnus, and these are going to pull the thigh in. So when the thigh is moved out to the side, when it's abducted, they will adduct it, so it will bring the thigh back in. At the back of the hip joint, we're going to have extensors, principally gluteus maximus. And you can see that as gluteus maximus glows, it extends that hip joint. Now, it will do that when the hip is straight, pulling it back even further. But if you're sitting down and you go to stand up, it's gluteus maximus, which is helping you stand. Gluteus maximus also laterally rotates the hip joint so you can see it glowing there and pulling that femur into external or lateral rotation. We can see another muscle which is attaching from the upper part of the ilium. It's called tensor fascia lati. Now the fascia lata is the thick deep fascia of the thigh and it's thickened up on the lateral side as the iliotibial tract. So the tensor of the fascia lata is going to pull on that fascia lata, that iliotibial tract. If tensor fascia lata pulls on that iliotibial tract when the knee is extended, it will help to keep it in extension. It will also assist gluteus medius and minimus in abducting the hip joint. And that's really important during walking, where gluteus medius minimus and tensor fascia lati are all operating to help keep the pelvis level as you're walking along. Let's take a look on the inside of the pelvis and highlight obturator internus and just check up on the actions of that on the hip joint. And just like obturator externus and the gemelli and piriformis and quadratus femoris, we can see that that is going to be a lateral or external rotator of the hip joint. So just to recap then, the hip joint is capable of flexion and it's psoas and iliacus that are mainly responsible for that, assisted by rectus femoris, part of quadriceps in the front, and another of the anterior thigh muscles, sartorius and pectineus as well. They're all flexors of the hips. Extension of the hip is carried out by gluteus maximus, and the hamstrings also help. We'll be meeting them in the next video. Adduction at the hip joint is carried out by those adductors in the medial thigh, also by pectineus. Abduction of the hip joint is carried out by gluteus medius and minimus and tensor fascia lata and sartorius, which we will meet again. Laterally rotating the hip joint, we've got piriformis, the obturator muscles, the gemelli, quadratus femoris and gluteus maximus as well. Medial rotation at the hip joint is carried out by gluteus medius and minimus and tensor fascia lata gets in on the action as well. The hip joint is a very stable joint. The femoral head fits snugly inside that deep bowl of the acetabulum and it takes considerable force to dislocate the hip, the kinds of forces that might be involved in something like a serious car accident. Fracture of the femoral neck is a really serious injury and treatment depends on whether the blood supply to the femoral head can be preserved or not. If it can't be preserved, depending on the level of the fracture, then the femoral head will have to be replaced with a prosthesis. If it can be preserved, then the femoral head can be screwed into place with a dynamic hip screw. So that's it for now about the hip joint. I will 
return to it when we look at the nerves and vessels of the lower limb. But the next video is going to move down to look at the thigh and we'll be focusing on the muscles of the thigh. I hope this has been useful. Please like, please share, please subscribe to Lockdown Anatomy so you're notified when the next video comes along. And I hope to see you back here very soon. Thank you for watching.